This question primarily looks at work energy and power. There's some resolving forces here as well, and we have an explanation question right at the end. So we have an electric wheelchair powered by a battery allows the user to move around independently. One type of electric wheelchair has a mass of 55 kilograms. The maximum distance it can travel on level ground is 12 kilometers when carrying a user of mass 65 kilograms and when traveling at a maximum speed of 1.5 meters per second. The battery has an EMF of 12 volts and it can deliver this much charge as it discharges fully and we're trying to work out the average power output of the battery during its journey. We're trying to show that that's about 100 watts. Okay, so we can think about power is worked on over time. We have voltage and charge, so we can get the work done from that. Work done is equal to QV. But we don't have time. So we'll have to work out what time is. We can do that by using the distance as well as the maximum speed. So using the equation speed is equal to distance over time, we can say that time is distance over speed. So that will be 12,000, converting the kilometers to meters, divided by 1.5 meters per second. So our time is 8,000 seconds. Now we can put everything together. So power is work done over time, so QV over time, which will be 7.2 times 10 to the 4, multiplied by V, all divided by time, which was 8,000. And that gives 108, which is approximately 100 watts. For 3.2, we have during the journey, forces due to friction and air resistance act on the wheelchair, so they're not negligible as they usually are. Assume that all of the energy available in the battery is used to move the wheelchair and its user during the journey. We want to calculate the total mean resistive force that acts on the wheelchair and its user. So we can use the equation, work done is equal to force times distance. We want to work out the resistive force, so force is work done over distance. We know the distance from earlier was 12,000. And the work done was QV. So the resistive force will then be QV over distance, which was, so Q was 7.2 times 10 to the 4, and then V was 12 volts. So 7.2, 10 to the 4, 12 volts, and then that all divided by the distance, which gives 72 newtons. Figure three shows the wheelchair and its user traveling up a hill. The hill makes an angle of 4.5 degrees to the horizontal. Calculate the force that gravity exerts on the wheelchair and its user parallel to the slope. So I think the best thing to do here would be to redraw this diagram. The angle is a bit small, so I'm gonna draw an exaggerated version of this slope um, so we can resolve the forces more easily. Okay, so here is part of our force diagram. I've just drawn the weight force, I've not drawn anything else for now. I've increased the angle of the slope. I mean, it's still 4.5 degrees, but just on our diagram I've increased it so it's easier for us to resolve this force. So we're told the mass is in the previous part. We're given the mass of the wheelchair is 55 kilograms, and then we're told the mass of the user is 65. So add the two things up. 55 plus 65 gives us 120. So the downward weight force over here would be 120 G. And we want to resolve this gravitational force parallel to the slope. So how we can do that is we first draw a line that is perpendicular to the slope. And then we draw another line from the head of this vector to the dashed line that we just drew that is now parallel to the slope. So this makes an angle of 90 degrees, or these two dashed lines make an angle of 90 degrees to one another. This angle here will end up being 4.5 degrees. And if you're not sure why, consider this triangle here, and then work out what this angle here would be, and then you should be able to get this angle. So the reason I've drawn the triangle like that is because this length here, that is parallel to the slope, 
that's the component of the weight force that is parallel to the slope. We can work that out by using Sokotoa. So we would do 120 G sine 45. So I'll write that over here. So this is just using Sokotoa. That will be our component parallel to the slope. And when we work this out, we get 92.36. So about 93 Newtons. For 3.4, calculate the maximum speed of the wheelchair and its user when traveling up this hill when the power output of the battery is 100 watts. Assume that the resistive forces due to friction and air resistance are the same as in question 3.2. Okay, so we can use the same force diagram that we had here I'm going to add the resistive force that we worked out. The resistive force that we worked out was 72 newtons. That is acting against motion. So that's going in this direction. So that's 72 newtons. We also then have a driving force. So that's going up the slope. Call that D. We have a normal contact force as well, but we're not really going to be considering this normal contact force for this question. So we're trying to work out, we have the power output of the battery. We're trying to work out the maximum speed. So we can think of the equation, power is equal to force times velocity. We have the power output, we have P is equal to 100. We're trying to work out V, and F would be the driving force. So if we look at our diagram up here, our driving force, because we know that our object is traveling at a constant speed, we're looking for the maximum speed. So basically, the wheelchair would be going up this slope, up this hill, and holding this speed as it does so, when the power output of the battery is 100 watts. So it's a constant speed. Therefore, this object should be in equilibrium. If it's in equilibrium, then the forces along any particular direction should sum to zero. So parallel to the slope, all of the forces parallel to the slope, which is the same direction in which the driving force acts, they should all sum to zero. We have the driving force going up the slope, we have 72 going down the slope, and we also have the component of weight that we worked out earlier, the 120g sine 4.5, we have that going down the slope as well. So the driving force will equal to these two things. So let's write that down. Our driving force is equal to 72 plus the component of the uh, weight force that is parallel to the slope. That was the 92.36. Add these two things up. We get 164.36. So that's our driving force. That's the F in this equation. And now we can rearrange this equation here for V. So V is equal to power divided by F, which will be the 100 divided by the 164.36, and that gives us a maximum speed of 0 0.608, or 0 0.61 meters per second. And now for the final part of this question, so explain how and why the maximum range of the wheelchair on level ground is affected by the mass of the user and the speed at which the wheelchair travels. So if you were to increase the mass, you will increase rolling resistance. So imagine pushing a trolley versus trying to push a car. Trying to push a car will be much harder, obviously, and that's because it has much more mass. So the rolling resistance, the resistance to just rolling on the ground, would be higher. So let's think about this equation. Work done is equal to force times distance. So F represents the total resistive force, let's say, which is the same thing as the driving force, because the forward forces will equal the backwards forces. As we are traveling at a constant speed throughout the journey, we're assuming at least. The distance will be the maximum distance traveled, so the range. The work done is the work done by the resistive forces, which is the same thing as the work done by the driving forces, which is also the same thing as the work done by the battery. So we're assuming that all of the electrical energy gets transferred to motion. That motion then gets dissipated into other forms. So W is the electrical energy that then gets transferred in the end, ultimately, 
to wasted forms such as heat and the kinetic energy of the air molecules when the wheelchair user collides with them, so due to air resistance, basically. So W is constant. The work done by the battery, the battery can only provide so much energy. W is constant. F then changes the resistive forces, and that affects the distance traveled. So if mass, increasing mass, will increase the rolling resistance, will increase friction, if F goes up, then the range will go down. And it's the exact same thing for speed. If you increase speed, you don't increase rolling resistance, but you increase air resistance. So if air resistance goes up, again, distance will go down. Distance traveled will go down. 